Harry's Wife, Part 75.6, Video Analysis. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and lucky you. You are now going to be treated to some further video footage containing Harry's wife, and I talk you through what's really going on, so that you understand the dynamic between the narcissist and other people, how the narcissist is feeling, what the narcissist will be thinking, why the narcissist reacts in the way that she does. This will enable you clear and obvious examples to help you gain further understanding, which you can apply to your own situations. Please do ensure that you share this video so that other people benefit from it. Share it far and wide. Make sure you like it and do show your appreciation with your observations in the comments also. Do give thanks to the wealth of the material that you receive from me. Let us embark upon the review and analysis of the relevant videos. Our first video involves the Queen and the, she is sat in an event looking resplendent in lime green and to her immediate right sits Harry's wife. The Queen is looking ahead, joking about something, no doubt a remark made to the people to her left, as Harry's wife leans in, immediately wanting to assert control. Remember, anybody that's on her radar, namely around her, that she sees, that she thinks about, has to be controlled. She doesn't consciously realise this. Her narcissism is causing this to happen. And you can appreciate that for a mid-range narcissist out of her depth, the issue of controlling all of those individuals directly becomes something of a challenge and therefore often leads to indirect or, as we have seen in other videos, remaining in a position of withdrawal and basically engaging in those dark thoughts which cause the death stares to appear. A more accomplished narcissist would find it far easier to control eminent individuals and on a large scale. Think about those accomplished po politicians that can make speeches that hold individuals in thrall, those great leaders, the entertainers, the demagogues, etc. Well, as we have here, Harry's wife needs to assert control and she leans in to try and speak to the Queen. Notice the hand over the mouth and she remarks and it appears almost as if she's talking to herself because Her Majesty hasn't responded. Indeed, Her Majesty hasn't even looked at her. So there was the attempt to assert control. The Queen's laughing at something else. Harry's wife leans in, tries to say something. The Queen doesn't appear to have heard her, or if she has, perhaps she's thinking, one doesn't want to listen to this shite, and has decided to ignore her and therefore continues to look to the side, mouth smiling about the remark that she's just heard. And Harry's wife has a rather strange look on her face. Looks quite deranged, actually. No doubt chortling at her own hilarious remark because nobody else is. And then we have the usual touching of the hair, which often occurs as a consequence of an anxiety reaction caused by the threat to her control. The Queen hasn't responded and that control hasn't been obtained. The camera angle changes, and this time we're looking from the left of the Queen, and the gentleman to her left is evidently saying something. The Queen has her gloved hand raised to her face. Perhaps she's wanting to sort of almost swat away Meghan Markle to her side. And Harry's wife is again trying to say something. Uh, we see the hand going up to the hair and then she's gesticulating and the Queen's paying her no attention whatsoever. Indeed, she's looking ahead as if to say, somebody stop this buzzing in my ear. Not sure what Harry's wife is gesticulating about. It might be that she's deciding that she's going to enter into some kind of pottery range that she's going to create and these are her latest ideas. She must have been speaking to somebody that engages in pottery and therefore has acquired the character trait. Queen thoroughly not interested at all and looks off to one side. Again, that threat to control, you'll notice that there is the, as Harry's wife lowers her hands and looks, she sees that she gets no reaction at all from the Queen, no response. And her expression, 
if you are able to pause the video at that point, which is around the sort of six or so seconds in, you'll notice that her expression alters, that she goes from demonstrating the new range of pottery, noticing the queen doesn't do anything, and there's a look of hurt upon her face. And that is the effect of wounding. There's no fury in this instance. That is the moment of the wounding scene. And she then turns away. The anxiety rises. Hand moves the hair. And then she continues to stare ahead. And you'll notice that the look has changed. The look of hurt has gone. And instead, she stares fixedly ahead instead. And it's at that point that the fury would start to rise. The footage doesn't go any longer than that, but demonstrates that the fury did start to ignite. It will have been cold fury as a consequence of the shunning that she received from Her Majesty. This clip then shifts us to the same event, evidently, and it's departure time. And away goes the Queen. She has a bouquet and probably the Lord Lieutenant looking after her. And Harry's wife trailing in the rear talking to somebody, her own bouquet in her hand. And here she comes, like a racehorse, riding up on the outside now, coming up. She's attempting to get in front of the Queen. And Chummy pops in and basically says, you've got to let the Queen go first, didn't you know? Oh, OK then. So you notice that as she's walking along, completely oblivious, wrapped up in her own world of self-entitlement, she starts to make the move to get around the Queen on the outside, and a sharp-eyed advisor, whoever it may be, perhaps as a police officer, a courtier, somebody from the function, notices this is happening and basically says, you need to wait and let Her Majesty get in first, or unless she invites you ahead. She then halts and then leans in awkwardly, the Queen making her way in, and Harry's wife stands, looking like a spare part, to one side, and then comes forward, and basically now the Queen says, go on, you get in first. I'll come in after you, thank you very much. Stop making a scene, hanging around, looking like a spare part, demonstrations you're not particularly accomplished. So here, there was the attempt through self-entitlement and lack of accountability to get ahead of the monarch, which is a breach of protocol or etiquette or whatever you might want to describe it as, a breach of etiquette most likely. And therefore, the individual prevents that from happening and says, no, nope, don't go down that road. Now, he pulls Megan up. That will, of course, have been a challenge because he's responsible of giving her fuel, but in telling her not to do something, it's a challenge. She halts and instead tries to focus on the Queen. The Queen's not particularly interested. She shuffles away, heading for the door of the car, or the doorway, and that causes then Harry's wife to think, right, I'll assert control elsewhere. Remember, this is not conscious. She turns to the gentleman that advised her, then back to Her Majesty, and actually on this occasion, Her Majesty gives her an out by allowing her to go ahead first, and therefore the challenge has been ameliorated by the Queen allowing Harry's wife to get in. And now on to our second video. Before the video starts, this footage relates to the United Service Organizations, which is an American non-profit charitable corporation that provides live entertainment, such as comedians, actors and musicians, social facilities and other programs to members of the United States Armed Forces and their families. A worthwhile venture, evidently. And on the stage are a number of individuals, no doubt from the armed forces, and Harry's wife. I have removed the sound so that you can obviously hear my narrative. What's actually happening is there's a rendition of White Christmas taking place. And as we see on the stage that the individual, the gentleman in the olive coloured jacket strides forward and he's belting out the songs or belting out the song, rather. And <clears throat> as he sings, Harry's wife, not quite sure what to do. 
Why is this? Well, in effect, if we pause it there, about five seconds in, the reason is that she is not having any involvement with anybody. Nobody's interacting with her, nobody's providing her with any fuel, and as a consequence of that, she's being wounded. Now, in order to assert control, she can't suddenly leap forward and rugby tackle the gentleman in the olive jacket and start to chew on his ear, or turn to Blondie on her left, yank her head back and start to try and gouge her eyes out. Can't be done, Facade won't allow it. She can't run forward and grab the mic and start to engage in her own rendition of Wild Thing. So the direct assertion of control over the participants on the stage, at that point, is denied to her. She could, of course, seek to assert control indirectly, but the problem that she's got is that there's no member of her coterie to hand that would respond in a favourable way. She might attempt to assert control over the other members on the stage around her, and that's a possibility, but... And if she's able to do so by a direct assertion of control on the two people nearest to her, she will no longer be wounded and that will stop and it will enable her to obtain fuel. So we see as we continue with the video that the gentleman continues to sing and the lady to her left is singing and the gentleman on his right is drumming. Nobody is paying her any attention as we get to eight seconds in. Nine seconds in, still nobody's paying any attention. The blonde lady's looking past her, looking at, I think, the other blonde lady on the end of the stage. And Harry's wife, if we pause there at 11 seconds, there it is, the old fixed rictus grin. Not really sure why I'm here, is what will be going through her mind. However, she doesn't know what to do. And the narcissism responds by creating the false fixed rictus grin, which we can all see, which is to, an attempt to fit in, to make it look like she's enjoying the occasion, but she's not, because she's being wounded, and her narcissism is fighting hard to maintain the facade at this juncture. We continue the video. She lifts her hand to her face, looks around to see if she can somehow assert control in some way. It appears that she attempts to engage the gentleman to her right, and her expression suggests that this might actually be an attempt to assert control over the tall gentleman and generally over the occasion. you notice the expression is almost one of, fuck me, what's going on here then? Of course, she gets no response from the tall gentleman. He looks away, not wanting to engage, and therefore, Harry's wife, still floundering to assert control as we get to 15 seconds, then looks to assert control over the blonde lady, placing a hand upon her. The familiar action of asserting control physically. You've seen this many times as she does this with Prince Harry. Of course, that fails because the blonde lady has moved over in linked arms with the lady beside her and there's a trio rocking back and forth as they sing. So Harry's wife has been denied the assertion of control, so she's been wounded again. No matter, she will turn to the guy on the right and attempt to assert control over him. Again, out comes the hand to try and touch him, but doesn't get anywhere. He doesn't make any move to link arms with her, clearly not keen to do so, and instead he goes for the old air drumming. Yes, that fallback of rejecting the narcissist of engaging in air drumming. And of course, he's not looking at her, not engaging, she's wounded again. Of course, the narcissism is managing to hold the facade as we have another self-conscious touch of the hair, the anxiety rising, and the rictus grin stays in place. And then there's an attempt to mirror. Oh, you're drumming, are you? I'll drum with you. And he doesn't again engage with her. She's still there, cut adrift in the centre. The trio is swaying on the right. She remains in the middle. She tries to catch the eye of the main singer as she joins in with the singing and he makes a remark about the gentleman wearing the red and grey top rather than responding again to Harry's wife. They all laugh as a consequence of the little joke that's made there. Harry's wife mirrors by joining in but again as she just turns you can see the grin fades and there is that look in the eyes as the narcissism now is struggling to keep that cold fury kept within. Another attempt is made to engage with the gentleman on the right, who's drumming away, but again he ignores her, and instead the narcissism directs her to look down at the stage, 
flick the hair, look up again with a fixed Richter's grin, a look of uncertainty, where do I go next, what do I do? Blonde lady's clearly not interested in me. Okay, I'll move back to the right. No, nothing happening there. Repeated wounding going on. Now, of course, again, she can't assert control directly. That's being rebuffed. There's no opportunity for her to assert control indirectly. It's not as if she can ring a flunky up and say, my goodness me, you should see this lot of idiots. And that flunky agrees with her. And therefore, she's left in a position of having to remain in withdrawal. And hence, we get these rather odd reactions throughout of trying to touch people, the lifting of the hands and then bringing them together. Not even clapping, but just then holding the hands in a rather strange manner. Then pointing over to him, the man singing, and then giving the applause. The whole episode, of course, for Harry's wife, as the video concludes, is one which is an utter disaster. No fuel repeated wounding and repeated attempts to deal with that wounding failing miserably. And now our third piece of footage, which before I started you will see it's on the balcony at Buckingham Palace and there stands another narcissist, Prince Andrew, allowed out at this stage before the necessity of scuttling away from public view as a consequence of the allegations made against him but that's a tale for another day and we shall be addressing it. So in this footage we see members of the royal family, Harry stood behind, talking to somebody behind him, Harry's wife looking forward, and then as it moves, she's looking around, looking around, again that unusual sort of fixed uncomfortable smile there as the facade does its best, and as we get to six seconds in, she turns and, facing away from the crowd, obviously asks Harry something, and he then tells her, he responds with something, causing her to turn around, and she looks back, but it's not enough. She's coming back and she turns again. Halfway on this time, she turns back to face, and you can see that at that juncture, when she turned halfway, Harry used his eyes and said something like, stay forward or turn around, indicating that she ought to do so. Now, when this took place, will have been prior to Harry's sustained devaluation. And so as she keeps turning around in breach of etiquette, he motions with his eyes and tells her, you need to face forward. And she complies. But look at her face as we halt it on 16 seconds or so. Not pleased whatsoever. Harry's response, of course, is challenge fuel because he reacted to her. He gave her a look of disapproval and an instruction that she should face the other way. That that was the appropriate thing to do. Notice how everybody else has been doing so. The young boy... Prince Andrew, the gentleman behind, the lady whose head you can just about see over Prince Andrew's right shoulder. They've all been looking forward. But not Harry's wife. Oh no, a sense of entitlement. I'm allowed to do what I want. I can look where I want. And she turns once and then back around. And when she tries a second time, she's rebuked by it. That's challenge fuel. Now, in that instance, her narcissism again would need to assert control because Harry has threatened her control. She could do so directly and say, why do I have to turn round? Or, I'm not going to do so. But a narcissism doesn't select that. Facade would prevent it. Also, I suspect that when this was filmed, it will have been during the Golden Period. And therefore, she's not in a position to try and use a malign response as against Harry for fear of the, the, for the narcissism eventually, essentially not wanting to lose overall control of him. Indirect control is forbidden. She can't do so. There's nobody that she can turn to and triangulate or smear Prince Harry to. And therefore, the only thing that she's left with is to stay in a position of withdrawal. She could storm out. And some narcissists would do, shoving their way past and causing a scene. Most likely a lesser, possibly. Uh, even a mid-ranger might do it. But here, the facade has to hold intact, and it does. So she doesn't storm off. 
through active withdrawal, which would be the third assertion of control, but rather she's put into a position of remaining in a position of withdrawal and not engaging. But her expression demonstrates that she's not pleased at all. And as we start the footage going again, she stares forward, stares forward. And then what do we see? Blinkity blink. There it is. Blinkity blink again. Blinking blink blink blink. Blinkity blink 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 blink. And so we see the repeated blinking 